But look at verse 20 of Genesis because there are some other incredible creatures. And it says in verse 20, And God said, Let the waters teem with swarms of living creatures, and let the birds fly above the earth in the open expanse of heaven. And God created the great sea monsters. Now, that's New American Standard. Uh, King James says whales. The modern versions, they don't know how to translate this word. It's the word tanaim. Twenty-eight times it occurs in the Bible. Three times it's whale. The rest of the time, it's dragon. You say, dragon? Are dragons real? Did you know that there were dragons on this earth, as far as we know? This protuberance, this little bump, you can't see it on the head of this guy, is a very common object in dinosaurs. And they have found many of the, of the dinosaurs had tubes in their heads that are hollow chambers. And as far as we know, they could have had the same mechanism as modern-day beetles have. There is a beetle that has the chemical capacity to put together a catalytic reaction. It puts two objects together, and those two objects produce a heat discharge, and then they come back into the body of this beetle. And the beetle is not injured at all by the 200-plus degree squirt that comes out of it. If a little tiny beetle can burn frogs by a chemical reaction, I have no doubt that God in his magnificence could create an animal that could probably do something very similar. And that's why dragon legends are a part of every culture of every people around the planet. In fact, if you look in old libraries in Europe, there's a book called Animalium Liberium. It's the book of animals. It's, it's a scientific text of all the animals alive in Europe in the 15th century. Four of the animals in this book with drawings are considered dinosaurs today. And in the 15th century, they were living and eating and walking around Europe. Uh, that's only 400 years ago, friends. Dinosaurs are alive and well on the planet. In fact, recently they found the, the answer to the missing link. They said that there was a certain fish type that disappeared 70 million years ago. And this fish type was the last known fish before the, the fish climbed up onto the earth and became reptilian and went from fish uh, into amphibian and, and reptilian uh, growth into other species. And you know what? A little fishing boat was dredging off Madagascar in the 70s. And what do you think they brought up in their net? A 70 million year old living fish that was that very fish they thought was the missing link. That evaporated from the evolutionary textbooks that week. But God said, I created all of the sea monsters. I created every living creature, verse 21, that moves. The waters swarmed after their kind. Have you ever thought about that word swarmed? What was the world like when the dinosaurs lived? It was a world swarming with life. It was a world with a vapor canopy, with trees that grew. If the plume plants that grow five feet high today grew almost a hundred feet high then, how high did the willows and the oaks and the magnolias and the redwoods grow? Have you ever thought about that? What an incredibly dense and flourishing world it must have been where these creatures lived and walked and where they ate hundreds of pounds of vegetation. It's interesting, the fish. And it says here, God said that he would make the, the sea swarm with living creatures in Genesis 1.21. There are some places, as in the Tibetan plateau, where there are 750,000 square miles in Tibet, between the mountains, at three miles of altitude, a valley with 750,000 square miles of fossilized remains of fish. Let me ask you, how did they get three miles high? How did they get up in Tibet, where today it's the cold, glacial, frozen part of our planet? Some have estimated that in Africa, a similar fossil bed, there are 800 billion fish in one Karao fossil bed. 800 billion fish? That, that is a lot of fish. And in one fossilized bed, they're squashed. Why? Because it says in verse 21 that the earth was swarming with life. And the earth wasn't just swarming with the five kinds of dinosaurs. There were horned dinosaurs. There were dinosaurs that had these plates. that had protective plates and defensive plates. And, and we know many of these, the uh, triceratops, the, the ones that the kids play with. But there weren't just 
horned dinosaurs. There were duck-billed dinosaurs. One of these is amazing. It had 2,000 teeth in its mouth. And those teeth were all backed by other teeth. And this thing could just grind away at the vegetation all day long. And when teeth wore out, they'd fall out. And another set would just be right in place. And they would just eat along through this lush, verdant undergrowth. Duck build. I think of the, uh, this, this 2,000 uh, teeth one was 18 feet high. And I can just imagine it as a lawnmower going through the dense, verdant undergrowth. Just better than anybody's lawnmower. And those things were alive on the earth the same time as people. How do we know that? Well, because the Bible says so, but you know how else we know it? Cave drawings. How did cavemen draw dinosaurs if they never lived with them? By the way, where did cavemen come from? We'll talk about that before we go. If you also look in California, and, and if it's, if it's a uh, place on your traveling, there is a, uh, an incredible fish uh, uh, fossilized area. It's called the shales of, of California, and there are one billion sardine-like fish all squashed in one little area of California that you can tour and actually see the ground is just squashed little shrimpy, uh, sardiny fish. And, and that is just one school of fish that was going through the ocean that when the flood hit, in some d downpour of the flood, somehow all those fish, that school got squashed. Can you imagine a school of a billion fish? How about the 800 billion that were in Africa? And those are only the ones that were fossilized. What's amazing is fossils don't form today like that. They rot away on the surface of the ground or at the bottom of the sea. They're eaten by scavenger. To it all be preserved as a fossil, a plant or animal has to be buried rapidly with a heavy load of sediment. That's why there's not one trace of the one million buffalo that were killed as America headed west. Because the bones were out bleached and carried away and eaten up and weathered and gone. There are no buffalo fossils from the 1840s and 50s. But there are literally billions of fish and other plants. 